Hello, it's Stefania over at Positive Affirmations and Audio Stories dot com. Here we are with part two of the James Allen book, Foundation Stones to Happiness and Success. If you've missed part one, you can find it via your podcast app or go to iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Spreaker. Or check your app. Part 2 of Foundation Stones to Happiness and Success. Sound Methods From the five foregoing right principles, when they are truly apprehended and practiced, will issue sound methods. Right principles are manifested in harmonious action, and method is to life what law is is to the universe. Everywhere in the universe, there is the harmonious adjustment of parts, and it is this symmetry and harmony that reveals a cosmos as distinguished from chaos. So, in human life, the difference between a true life and a false, between one purposeful and effective and one purposeless and weak, is one of method. The false life is an incoherent jumble of thoughts, passions, and actions. The true life is an orderly adjustment of all its parts. It is all the difference between a mass of lumber and a smoothly working efficient machine. A piece of machinery in perfect working order is not only a useful but an admirable and attractive thing but when its parts are all out of gear and refuse to be readjusted, its usefulness and attractiveness are gone, and it is thrown on the scrap heap. Likewise, a life perfectly adjusted in all its parts so as to achieve the highest point of efficiency is not only a powerful, but an excellent and beautiful thing. Whereas a life confused, inconsistent, discordant, is a deplorable exhibition of wasted energy. If life is to be truly lived, method must enter into and regulate every detail of it. As it enters and regulates every detail of the wondrous universe of which we form a part. One of the distinguishing differences between a wise man and a foolish is that the wise man pays careful attention to the smallest things, while the foolish man slurs over them or neglects them altogether. Wisdom consists in maintaining things in their right relations, in keeping all things, the smallest as well as the greatest, in their proper places and times. To violate order is to produce confusion and discord, and unhappiness is but another name. For discord. The good business person knows that system is three parts of success and that disorder means failure. The wise person knows that disciplined, methodical living is three parts of happiness and that looseness means misery. What is a fool but one who thinks carelessly, acts rashly, and lives loosely? What is a wise person but one who thinks carefully, acts calmly, and lives consistently? The true method does not end with the orderly arrangement of the material things and external relations of life. This is but its beginning. It enters into the adjustment of the mind, the discipline of the passions, the elimination and choice of words in speech, the logical arrangement of thoughts, and the selection of right actions. To achieve a life rendered sound, successful, and sweet by the pursuance of sound methods, one must begin not by neglect of the little everyday things, but by assiduous attention to them. Thus, the hour of rising is important and its regularity significant as are also the timing of retiring to rest and the number of hours given to sleep. Between the regularity 
and irregularity of meals, and the care and carelessness with which they are eaten is all the difference between a good and bad digestion, with all that this applies, and an irritable or comfortable frame of mind, with this train of good or bad consequences. For attaching to these meal times and meal ways are matters of both physiological and psychological significance. The due division of hours for business and for play, not confusing the two, the orderly fitting in of all the details of one's business, times for solitude, for silent and for effective action, for eating and for abstinence, all these things must have their lawful place in the life of one whose daily round is to proceed with a minimum degree of fiction, who is to get the most of usefulness, influence, and joy out of life. But all this is but the beginning of that comprehensive method which embraces the whole of life and being. When this smooth order and logical consistency is extended to the words and actions, to the thoughts and desires, then wisdom emerges from folly, and out of weakness comes power sublime. When a man so orders his mind as to produce a beautiful working harmony between all its parts, then he reaches the highest wisdom, the highest efficiency, the highest happiness. But this is the end, and she who would reach the end must begin at the beginning. She must systemize and render logical and smooth the smallest details of her life, proceeding step by step towards the finished accomplishment. But each step will yield its own particular measure of strength and gladness. To sum up, method produces that smoothness which goes with strength and efficiency. Discipline is the method applied to the mind. It produces that calmness which goes with power and happiness. Method is working by rule. Discipline is living by rule. But working and living are not separate. They are but two aspects of character, of life. Therefore, be orderly in work. Be accurate in speech. Be logical in thought. Between these and slovenliness, inaccuracy and confusion is the difference between success and failure, music and discord, happiness and misery. The adoption of sound methods of working, acting, thinking, in a word, of living, is the surest and safest foundation for sound health, sound success, sound peace of mind. The foundation of unsound methods will be found to be unstable and to yield fear and unrest even while it appears to succeed. And when its time of failure comes... It is grievous indeed. 3. True Actions Following on right principles and methods come true actions. One who is striving to grasp true principles and work with sound methods will soon come to perceive that details of conduct cannot be overlooked, that indeed those details are fundamentally distinctive or creative according to their nature, and are therefore of deep significance and comprehensive importance. And this perception and knowledge of the nature and power of passing actions will gradually open and grow within him as an added vision, a new revelation. As he acquires this insight, his progress will be more rapid, his pathways in life more sure, his days more serene and peaceful in all things. He will go the true and direct way, unswayed and untroubled by the external forces that play around and about him. Not that he will be indifferent 
to the welfare and happiness of those about him, that is quite another thing. But he will be indifferent to their opinions, to their ignorance, to their ungoverned passions. By true actions indeed is meant acting rightly towards others. And the right doer knows that actions in accordance with truth are but for the happiness of those about him, and he will do them, even though an occasion may arise when someone near him may advise or implore him to do otherwise. True actions may easily be distinguished from false by all who wish so to distinguish, in order that they may avoid false action and adopt truth. As in the material world, we distinguish things by their form, color, size, etc. Choosing those things which we require and putting by those things which are not useful to us. So in the spiritual world of deeds, we can distinguish between those that are bad and those that are good by their nature, their aim, and their effect and can choose and adopt those that are good and ignore those that are bad. In all forms of progress, avoidance of the bad always precedes acceptance and knowledge of the good. Just as a child at school learns to do its lessons right by having repeatedly pointed out to it how it has done them wrong, if one does not know what is wrong and how to avoid it, how can he know what is right and how to practice it? Bad or untrue actions are those that spring from a consideration of one's own happiness only and ignore the happiness of others, that arise in violent disturbances of the mind and unlawful desires, or that call for concealment in order to avoid undesirable complications. Good or true actions are those that spring from a consideration for others, that arise in calm reason and harmonious thought framed on moral principles, or that will not involve the doer in shameful consequences if brought into the full light of day. The right doer will avoid those acts of personal pleasure and gratification which by their nature bring annoyance, pain, or suffering to others no matter how insignificant those actions appear to be. He will begin by putting away these. He will gain a knowledge of the unselfish and true by first sacrificing the selfish and untrue. He will learn not to speak or act in anger or envy or resentment, but will study how to control his mind and will restore it to calmness before acting. And most important of all, he will avoid, as he would the drinking of deadly poison, those acts of trickery, deceit, double-dealing, in order to gain some personal profit of advantage, and which will lead, sooner or later, to exposure and shame for the doer of them. If a man is prompted to do a thing which he needs to conceal, and which he would not lawfully and frankly defend it if it were examined of witness, he should know by that that it is a wrong act and therefore to be abandoned without a further moment's consideration. The carrying out of this principle of honesty and sincerity of action, too, will further lead him into such a path of thoughtfulness in right doing as will enable him to avoid doing those things which would involve him in the deceptive practices of other people. Before signing papers or entering into verbal or written arrangements, or engaging himself to others in any way at their request, particularly if they be strangers, he will first inquire into the nature of the work or undertaking. And so enlightened, he will know exactly what to do, and will be fully aware of the import of his action. To the right doer, thoughtlessness is a crime. Thousands of actions done with good intent lead to disastrous consequences because they are acts of thoughtlessness. And it is well said that the way to hell is paved with good intentions. The man of two actions 
is above all things, thoughtful. Be ye therefore wise as serpents, and harmless as doves. The term thoughtlessness covers a wide field in the realm of deeds. It is only by increasing in thoughtfulness that a man can come to understand the nature of actions, and can thereby acquire the power of always doing that which is right. It is impossible for a man to be thoughtful and act foolishly. Thoughtfulness embraces wisdom. It is not enough that an action is prompted by a good impulse or intention. It must arise in thoughtful consideration if it is to be a true action. And the one who wishes to be permanently happy with oneself and a power for good to others must be concerned only with true actions. I did it with the best of intentions. It's a poor excuse from one who has thoughtlessly involved themselves in the wrongdoing of others. Their bitter experience should teach them to act more thoughtfully in the future. True actions can only spring from a true mind. And therefore, while a woman is learning to distinguish and choose between the false and the true, she is correcting and perfecting her mind, and is thereby rendering it more harmonious and felicitous, more efficient and powerful. As she acquires the inner eye to clearly distinguish the right in all details of life and the faith and knowledge to do it, she will realize that she is building the house of her character and life upon a rock which the winds of failure and the storms of persecution can never undermine. And that's the end of part two of the James Ellen book, Foundation Stones to Happiness and Success. The conclusion will follow in about two weeks because I'm taking a little break from the mic, but I'll be right back with the conclusion after that time. Feel free to leave a comment if you'd like or feel free to visit our blog, Positive Affirmations and Audio Stories dot com. We're on Facebook, Positive Affirmations and Audio Stories. We'll look forward to being with you again very soon. Bye.